Growing onions from seed is easier than you think. So I'll get right to it. Sprout seeds into seedlings using the plate method I've described in previous videos. It's the same as for most seeds, and to save you from ad nauseum repetition, I won't explain it here again. You can start them indoors early, very early, like 8 to 10 weeks before your last frost date. As soon as the soil is workable outside, you can plant them. I'm about to show you tips for growing onions successfully without much effort. I'm Siloe Oliveira, and I believe in sharing knowledge of sustainability and food freedom through my suburban homestead. The secret is in the soil. Every gardener knows that. While onions aren't particularly fussy about soil, they do best in good draining loam that is fertile and full of organic matter. I'm growing in a patch of soil that previously was compacted red clay, the material you make bricks out of. I know it's hard to believe unless you're an organic gardener and have seen this miracle before. But seeing how the soil looks now, compared to 4 years ago when I started to amend it, it's quite a transformation. I use leaf compost, also called leaf mold, to improve the texture and soil life. I'm using store bought simply because I don't have enough compost, but you can make your own. I'll use two large bags for a bed that measures about 2.5 by 15 feet. I also like to add a bit of balanced organic fertilizer whenever I start a new gardening season. Since I had collards growing in this bed in the past year, I feel that the soil will benefit from an extra boost of nitrogen. You can test your soil if you want to be certain that it needs extra fertility. But always use organic fertilizer, not chemical. You don't need to add too much. A small amount will make a big difference. This specific one I'm using claims to have beneficial mycorrhizae, and I really like the way that my plants respond to it. Trifecta fertilizer that Luke from MI Gardener channel sells seems to be a similar all-natural product. It does appear to be stronger though, and although I haven't tried it out myself, I might in the future. I use a garden fork to incorporate this into the ground. A strong garden fork is an essential tool. It is superior for mixing or aerating the soil compared to shovel. Forks injure earthworms less than shovels do. Now, for those of you who have watched my channel for a while, might be wondering why I'm disturbing the soil at all, since it disrupts soil life. As much as I agree with the no-dig theory, I'm not a purist. Yes, I feel that mixing the soil is a shortcut for better yields in the short term. Of course, more extreme conventional measures like rototilling every year and leaving the soil uncovered, poking and prodding it to remove weeds all season long are harmful in the long term. In fact, each year that passes, I disturb the soil less. This year, besides growing onions in this bed, I'll also grow carrots. Carrots need deep, loose soil to develop well, and unlike overly disturbed soil, that becomes more compacted and brick-like every year, my soil has improved texture. Another important issue is that to do no-dig gardening successfully, you need lots of extra organic matter to pile upon the existing soil to encourage soil life like earthworms to do the digging for you. You will also need time and patience. And while gardening's main purpose, it seems, is to teach people patience, we tend to run out of it and finding enough organic material can be difficult for some. So incorporating a bit of organic matter into the soil by digging it in can be good at times if done responsibly. Remember, you are displacing billions of soil organisms in the process, and many of them die. <laughs> but seriously, working towards a no-dig garden is good for everybody, and it means less hard work for you. Just follow these four simple rules so you don't ruin your soil. Never dig your soil more than once a season. When you dig, add organic matter. Never leave your soil uncovered for long, use mulch. Work it less each year, as its texture improves every time. Once you have established good soil, get your onion seedlings and prepare to start planting. 
choose a spot that gets more than 6 hours of sun exposure. Onions grow poorly in the shade. Unfortunately, my soil doesn't get as much sun as I wish it would, but it will do. I space onions about 6 inches apart. Besides regular bulbing onions, I'm also planting leeks in the same manner mixed in. At this stage, it is difficult to tell leek from onion. I'm also planting bunching perennial onions that keep growing and branching throughout the seasons. They do not produce a bulb, but I use them as green onions or scallions year-round. Unlike the bulbing onions that I planted one seed to a cup to ensure good bulb development, I planted three to four seeds in each cup of the bunching onions. I'm putting them as a border on the side of the bed to make for easy daily harvest without disruption of the plants inside. Remember that onions started indoors benefit from a hardening off by leaving them outside in a protected place before planting them in the ground. Many of us opt in using store-bought onion sets instead of raising from seed. Now there is a caveat to this. Onions are biennials. That means they store up energy in a bulb the first year, winter over, and flower or bolt the second summer. Some onion sets end up bolting instead of developing bulbs since the plants think this is a second year of growth. There are many different factors that contribute to this. Temperature, stress, light, etc. Some store-bought sets are heat treated to prevent bolting, but I feel that growing them from seed is more reliable for bulb production. It's best to plant them outside before they've developed more than six leaves on each plant. If they are past that level of maturity and experience cold when planted outside, after they have been growing in warmer inside temperatures, they may react as if it's the second year of growth and flower instead of producing a bulb. Growing from seed also means you have a greater array of possible varieties to grow from. Seed is also cheaper. I am not only going to plant onions in this bed, as I almost never only plant one species in a garden bed. I like to interplant. So in this bed, I will also sow carrots in between the onions. Carrots and onions work well together. Onions protect carrots from nematodes, and their leaf shapes don't compete with one another for space. Onions are tall and spear-like, carrots are fern-like. Now, onions are resilient plants, and they transplant really well. However, it is always a good idea to still be careful when transplanting them to minimize shock. Planting time is a good time to relax and be in the moment with nature. After planting new seedlings, it is a good practice to water them well, so they get a jump start in root development. Once your onions establish themselves, you won't need to water them as long as there is enough rain. Actually, you won't even have to maintain them. And after they create bulbs, don't water them at all to ensure maturity. Dry weather after bulbing is a good thing before harvest to ensure that the onions keep well without rotting. My onions were ready by mid-summer, which would leave me enough time to grow a second crop if I wanted to. I grew a medium-sized yellow onion, which produced well, especially considering I grew in less than perfect sun exposure, interplanted with lots of carrots and some greens. It turned out that I had grown more leeks and bunching onions than bulbing onions, but the flavor and crispness of the ones I got made it worth it. One more thing to consider. There are long day onions that need at least 14 to 16 daylight hours to bulb and do best in the north of Washington DC and short day varieties that bulb with 10 to 12 hours and do well south of New Orleans. For those in between these latitudes, there are neutral varieties that can work. If you plan on saving your onions for later use, it is a good idea to hang them or let them cure in a sunny spot that is protected from rain. Join me next time for another garden adventure. Remember to send your questions and comments to seedofchoice at gmail.com and don't forget to subscribe to Suburban Homestead.